world, meet Zion. Absolutely not a dog that you want to mess with. He just wants to bite somebody. That's just the type of dog he is. An assassin. You know, the dog's wearing a muzzle. You take that muzzle off, and it's a whole nother ball game. That's when you're going to have a problem. He's going to slide that muzzle off. That mouth's going to come out real quick and just nail you, you know? Short attack. Oh. <laughs> So this is Zion, right here. He's uh, he's not the friendliest of fellas, but he, well, with me he is, but he's right here at my feet. You, know, you don't want to be in there with him. No, no. So Zion may be one of my lesser known dogs. Don't get it confused. Zion would definitely be a genuine Hall of Famer. He is an original. Well, he's lesser known for a reason. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I didn't really want people to know too much about him. Let you think that because something happened to Ace that there ain't nobody serious up in there. Let you think that, you know what I mean? There's a lot of dogs around here that people don't know anything about. World, meet Zion. He is the real deal. This is one of the more dangerous dogs here at DDK. Zion is off of Maya in general, the OGs. He's the last of a very special class of dogs. Zion, uh, was, he just was a secret weapon. Today, me and my guys, they got here. Um, we're just gonna run Zion through some activities. You know, we're gonna show the aggression that the dog will bite for real. And then we're gonna put the muzzle on him. We're gonna let him do some muzzle attacks. I'm putting the muzzle on because we don't need Isaac to go to the hospital today, so. I know, you love this thing. This is a civil dog, meaning he will bite you for real. He's not looking for equipment. He's not looking for a sleeve, a suit. He is looking to bite a human being. And he is so fired up right now that he's shaking. That's how much he wants to bite somebody. He's not even mad. He didn't even do nothing to him. He just wants to bite somebody. That's just the type of dog he is. If he bit you like flat on the forearm, he'd probably break your wrist, you know, like that. That's the type of power that these dogs possess in their body. They'll break your bones, they bite you. I mean, what makes Zion different to the other dogs is level of training really that he's at. I trained him during a different era of my life. I needed, you know, legit protection. You know, so he has a couple techniques that some of these dogs don't have. He really wants to bite for real. So at times you'll see him trying to take the muzzle off because he really wants to get to that ass. The risk involved, you know, but I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was essentially the bad guy. So, you know, I just came in. I'm wearing no equipment. There's no cue to the dog that I'm going to do anything. I was acting like I was his friend. And, you know, the enemy or the criminal isn't always going to look like the enemy or the criminal. I'm telling you, just a word to the wise people. Watch your peoples. They're the ones who will try you. you know? So your dog got to be ready 24-7. I mean, like 24 seven, like, I mean, anything, anybody, like anybody. And that's how, if you have a dog that's your bodyguard, that's how it has to be. Good boy. Good attack. Good attack. Good. Good attack. Oh, get him. Don't me, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. We wanted to show in that moment was, you know, Quickly, a moment can go from calm to not, and the dog was gonna react right off the bat. Not a dance or, or so, it's, he's, he wants to bite you. He wants that muzzle off so that he can grab you. That's when you're gonna have a problem. He's gonna slide that muzzle off, that mouth's gonna come out real quick and just nail you, you know? If he popped the muzzle off in the situation where, you know, he has him on the ground and I'm at a distance, yeah, we, we uh, me and I are gonna be, uh, you know, taking a trip to the ER. You know, the dog's wearing a muzzle, you take that muzzle off, and it's a whole nother ball game. He did all that muzzle work, got nothing out of it, so now we're just stroking his ego, you know, making him feel good about what he just did. So yeah, I'm about to be getting bit by an 85-pound dog who targets arms, legs. They'll bite you wherever. You're not worried about getting your face bitten off? There's always that risk involved, but you know, this is something I love doing, so to me that's just way, the, way over there. I'm not even worried about that. You see the dog instantly spits the sleeve out and focuses on the body. 
So that's a key factor in showing that dog is Whoa, ready and willing to bite for real. Watch your nuts. In a situation where there was an accident, you know, I would get the dog off of him ASAP. But, but you know, imagine a jaw full right. of teeth biting your face. You don't want that. <laughs> yeah, so overall, I think Zion did great today. Um, you know, he's a very, very ferocious dog, very powerful. But he is under control, he is obedient, and that's pretty much all really a protection dog needs, you know. But not every dog has to be your friend. You know, they just have to be in control, that's it. So he wasn't built like Hulk to be able to go out in public, or the dog has one purpose. So when he come up in my house, it's gonna be a problem. He'll still whoop ass, that's all I need to know. We're gonna bring out the whole the dog that probably outweighs her by like 60, 70 pounds. Oh god, oh god, oh god. So Karina has been begging me to get into this bite suit. Today we're gonna make it happen. He is gonna snap your arm like a toothpick. I'm freaking out. I feel like I might get sick. <sighs> ah, nothing like a shot of you carrying some poop. <laughs> nice. So Karina is kind of caretaker of the dogs and she helps out Lisa. Ever since she's been here, she's been asking about getting in the bite suit and just really progressing her training. She's been begging me to get into this bite suit. Why? I don't know. She just wants to get bit by these dogs, I guess. I wanted to get in the bite suit ever since I got here and now I finally have the opportunity to do it. We're gonna go in there with Ice and then Hulk. Okay, so I met Karina uh, a couple years ago. She was a fan, so she had been watching our stuff for a while. She contacted me wanting to do volunteer work and she'd come up like oh, once a week, or maybe twice a week, just to volunteer, take the dogs for walks, just grooming, nail clipping, that kind of thing. I asked if she wanted to move in and be part of the team. A few months later, she moved in and it's been great. I just wanted to see if, if, if she was gonna be able to handle it at all. Everybody wants to get in there until you get like punched in the face keep... or bit by the dog in this case. It's a pretty big dog. He's not the biggest person in the world, you know? Let's see what she's got. They're gonna bite me on the arm, and it's exciting. And I'm nervous. I like to live on the edge, I guess. Yeah, we're gonna see what he thinks of you first. I'm gonna, uh, uh, no, he's ready. Yeah. Right, so, pat your side with the stick real quick. Watch! Watch, Ice, watch! It's him doing it. Let's move me, like swing him. Yeah. Ow! Just felt like you were playing tug of war with him. I mean, with the sleeve, that's exactly what it is. You just, there's a tube, so your arm goes inside of this tube, and the dog bites right here. So you, you feel nothing in this. They don't, literally, you literally feel nothing. There's no pain. The only thing you feel is the dog jerking your arm around. That's all you're gonna feel. When you're talking about a bite suit, it's a bit of a different situation. You know, because it's just, like this is my arm, right there, that's, and trust me, I can feel all of that pressure. So you just imagine putting teeth into that. And now I'm even more nervous. They actually bite through the suits. I mean, the only thing the suit does is keep you away from going to the hospital. When you're in the suit, it's a little bit more scary. You're gonna feel it. Not really my thing. <laughs> I'd rather be on the other end of the leash. Ready? Oh god, oh god, oh god. Nice. Oh god. There you go. Oh. Good boy. Good. See, now he's off. He's still not. There you go. Good. Good boy. There we go. Good boy. I felt like he was going to come up in my face, but I knew Marlon was in control of him, so I wasn't that worried. Good. She got a good little couple little nicks from the dogs. You know, he got to her a few times. He got caught there and there, and there, and there. That'll bruise, that'll all, those are the two teeth from right here, there. My heart's racing, yes. It feels extremely intense. You know, as much as I smile and I laugh and I joke, at the end of the day, this is a, this is a serious business and it's a serious job. Karina, welcome to the bike club. Karina seems to be handling ice pretty well, but now it's time to step it up and try with help. H-U-L-K. 
I think she's gonna scream. Karina should be worried. So now we're gonna bring out the Hulk. The dog that probably outweighs her by like 60, 70 pounds, and we'll see if he decides to play nice with her or not. Sweat is beating off of her no, face. No, it's not. When you have a skirt, so I'm gonna flag her. If there was no, if there was no protection and Hulk is biting you, I mean, he is gonna snap your arm like a toothpick. Hey. So, step to the side, and it's like perfectly right in his mouth like that. Ah, oh, all right. Karina started off pretty confident, but she definitely looked a little bit more nervous when Hulk came out. I'm a nervous scale of one to 10 out of 10. Even higher, actually. <laughs> I am, I'm freaking out. I feel like I might get sick. Oh, God. What goes through my head is like, all my focus is on him. Everything else is gone. Karina's a pretty tough girl, but anybody that's in the suit, sleeve, anything with Hulk, you're gonna be reminded pretty quick uh, that you don't choose, you don't make any decisions at that point. And it's all up to the dog. <laughs> He goes where he wants to go when he's got you in his, in his mouth like that. Now I'm sweating. I feel bad for anyone Here, who out. tries to f with him. Yeah, overall, I think she did great. I mean, she listened well. She followed direction well. Ace. He was good. We, got, we have a starting point now. I'm excited. I like a challenge, though. <laughs> so. Me too. <laughs> I knew looking at him, I knew. And I, I honestly didn't think that he was gonna wake up this morning. The whole world is gonna be in shock, you know. My best friend is gone. It's like hard to look at him now because he's just like not himself. He's just like not himself at all. This is the legend that most people are unaware of because when they see him, they think he's Hulk. You know, he's Hulk's grandfather. He's Kong's great-grandfather, obviously. There would be no company. I wouldn't know anything about dog training if it wasn't for this dog right here. I mean, you know, he's like 11 years old. He's just old. I, I mean, I know my dogs, I could tell. It's never been so clear that I've seen a dog telling me like, yo, dad, I'm tired. He's about to go to the vet right now, and we're just gonna uh, hear what they say. His personality is, I mean, he's, he's kind of just like me. I mean, he's, he's laid back. I mean, he's, he's a calm guy, but when it's time to be serious, he's serious. Uh, you know, we came up together. I was gonna send him away somewhere for dog training, and I was like, you know, let me see if I can try my hand at this training thing myself. I mean, the rest is kind of history from there. I mean, and he learned everything so quickly. I mean, I, I taught him so many things that people would take weeks to teach. I, I literally taught him in an hours. Hulk had shoes to fill already. about to lose my best friend is what's uh, about to happen. Just took a turn for the worst. There's an old man in the house, you know, they all had respect for him. The whole house will feel it, no doubt. The whole world's gonna feel it, it's not just the house. The whole world's gonna feel this one. I mean, is, I don't know, it's a pretty deep The whole world is gonna be in shock, you know. And this is a day I just never thought that I would ever see. I knew looking at him, I knew. And I, I honestly didn't think that he was gonna wake up this morning. But, I mean, you know, all of me just doesn't want this to be real. So I just, and he deserves not feel pain anymore.
least I know like he lived he could full life. But he could be short. Only reason I'm gonna do this is for him, that's all. I told him, I told him I'm gonna finish what we started and I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly like we always said, I'm gonna keep going. Star gave me more gifts than I could ever give back. He's just tired, he's tired and, and I mean he carried me for however long. You know, Eleven years the dog carried me. I mean he 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 defended me in situations, put his life on the line for me. He built me a legacy, I mean produced these incredible dogs, always was there for me, always happy, always wagging his tail. That was one of the main things. He wasn't wagging his tail no more. First. I just told him that I, you know, keep, keep an eye on everybody upstairs, you know? There's a whole lot of them up there now. So at least he's got friends. It was Steve-O now. You know? Ace up there, they all just, Maya up there, him and Maya, the originals, you know? At least he's got some, some, some people up there. I don't know. I don't really know what to say. My best friend is gone. The legend is gone. The logo that you see, the main logo that I have is him. So, I mean, he was basically the pioneers, the OG of Dark Dynasty Canines. The general, so he's uh, he's he's sleeping now. He's a happy old man. He's a he's a pretty special fella. Old guy, old guy, old guy, old guy. This is Sosa, the next super dog. He's Woo. Billy Badass. He's never been out. I don't know how he's gonna react to what he sees. Suddenly there's this husky that's coming towards us and right off the bat there was tension. No. Alright, let's, right, let's do this. Alright. This is Sosa. He's the next prodigy. He's the next best thing. So yeah, Sosa is definitely a little <laughs> All right, be calm. He doesn't know what calm means, though. Not yet. Little <laughs> He's just a young little psychopath. He's about 10 months old now. He's probably relatively close to the size that he will actually be. You'll notice that he's, he's very different from, you know, where he was last time. To actually teach him to be a pure soldier takes a lot of time. He's extra, extra stubborn, and that's really what you want. When you got a dog that's like a mega asshole, you almost know they're gonna do good in this field. Building one of these dogs, what you're doing is, you're giving this dog the biggest ego that he can possibly have. He literally needs to think he is invincible, he's the baddest dog walking the planet, and nothing can stop him. You gotta check your ego at the door, it's all about the dog's ego. You know, he's gotta think he's Billy Badass 24-7. I'm gonna get him on this wedge, let him get a couple bites, just make sure his engagement is right. He might get bit, might get punched in the face by a paw. Definitely gonna get dragged around. But if you don't like that, don't train dogs. I'll train him to be 100% war ready. Like, he doesn't understand that he's like training for protection work. He just thinks he's playing a game. So that game's gonna carry on until we start to show him, you know, an actual threat. But right now, it's literally we're just playing a game, you know? Because basically what you're doing, you eliminate hesitation, you know what I mean? That's what we want. Because in, in this game, security game, you hesitate, you die. So the dog, you gotta learn zero hesitation. And this dog has spent most of his time here on the farm, but it's time that, you know, we take him out in the public, we take him out to more in a city setting, we see how he is, you know, around traffic, you know, around just regular people, because that's gonna be an important part of being a protection dog is being able to function in you know general society. So you know I just want to test test his mindset. I just want to see where his head is really at. And you know that's what we're gonna go do today. So today we're gonna take Sosa out into Concord and just let him see things that we don't have up home. 
He's never been out, so it's just all new for him. He's gonna be like dragging me down the street. It's gonna be a good time. So we're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. Honestly, like I'm just literally looking for things like, even like, like that right there, like just a little staircase. I might just let him walk him down. I'm literally just getting him used to things that you would think you would never have to get something used to. And that's what I'm doing right now. So we call it imprinting and dog training. Just basic, basic wandering around with him. I don't know how he's gonna react to what he sees, but he's on the prowl. See, his swag ain't changed, that's what we want. So basically, I'm just letting him, you know, see the sights, see just what it's like to see just everyday people, traffic, cars, sounds. He isn't really obedient yet. So, you know, we can't let anybody touch him or anything like that. But nobody's ever dealt with Sosa but me and Lisa, really. One of the worst situations that we could have is, you know, there being a ton of people just trying to flood Sosa when we're trying to, you know, do this imprinting. So I needed my security with me to keep people at bay. We get a lot of people coming up to us wanting to take pictures. A lot of attention. Right now, we kind of want to keep people at bay and just really focus on the dog. Come on, bro. Yeah, this is weird. I think this is weird, too. Come on. Come on. If I'm going, you're going. Come on. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come on. So the reason why I had him doing this is repetition, you know. So initially, he had a little pause. We didn't want to do it. So we just pull him through it, you know, no fear. And then by the second or third time, confidence starts to change. So we're building confidence in the dog. So, Skip. Come on, come on, come on, right through, right through, come on, jump, do the hoop, do the hoop, do the next one. Getting him to jump through the hoop, he did really well in that, and it was great to see him learn something like that and master it in just a few tries. He learned really quick. Good job. I can tell right now he really doesn't like to be around in tight spaces too much, so that's something that I'm going to work on. There you go. So I'm walking down the street, and suddenly there's this husky that's coming towards us in an aggressive posture. Nope. So, no, no, he's never, he's never seen nothing like that. You can see when the husky came up, he got down real low and he got in this position, which is a, a stalking position, you know? So right off the bat, there was tension. He's, he's alert right now, you know? So he's kind of bothered, so. This is why he's here. This is all things that he has to work on, uh, you know? So, you know, we've seen another dog, his reaction, just, it wasn't, it just was mildly disappointing, but it's not anything that we can't correct. He's still got a long way to go. We got a lot to do with him, but I know he's gonna be the future star here at DDK. Normally when you deal with protection dogs, you know, you're not gonna get the dog that has this like stunning look. You know, you pick based on performance. So to have a dog that's that rare, that I know just from seeing him has the skills to be probably the best dog that I've ever trained is a, is a gift. He's gonna be a star, beyond. He's a prodigy. I got Sosa, I got Kong, I got Kobe, uh, Hulk. Names are powerful, man. Uh, so me and Nicki Minaj. I figured I'd bring rat beef into the dog game. Just like the real Nicki Minaj. She don't play around. She's gonna be a pop star. That's what's been hard lately. I've nailed so many names. You really gotta think about it now. You like, really get the good ones. These two don't have names. What do you think we should name this puppy? I really don't know. Um. So Nikki's one of our rising stars here at DDK. All of our dogs are beautiful, but she's got just this special, very unique look with her two colored eyes. She's absolutely stunning. The fans love her. Social media loves her. She takes great pictures. My Nikki Minaj has a, has a toot. And, and from, from what I can see, the real Nikki Minaj has a toot. It's queen attitude, you know what I mean? They got that queen attitude. She's beautiful. Bing Bing, they both match up right there. Tude, Bing Bing, both got it. Queen Life, both got it. I mean, having this pit bull named after her, I'm sure she'd be honored. She's a beautiful dog, and she's a Hulk in her pedigree. I mean, she's Nicki Minaj. 
It's really beautiful in the mountains. There's a lot of scenic areas. So we like to take advantage of that and bring the dogs out for pictures, involve the kids, and just spend the day kind of relaxing. The dogs are our business, so we need to show them in their best light. They're like models. Hold on to a tight, Jordan. Oh, that's not tight. <laughs> All right, I'll take her. All right, let her go. To get the best shot of the dog, the best way is with two people. And I like to have somebody else being a distraction for the dog, kind of keeping their focus on them instead of letting the dog get distracted with things around them. Got that? Good job. With her, I really like the eye shot because she's such beautiful eyes. Heterochromia is two different colored eyes, which is really rare. That's something that's very unique about her, you know, I think her eyes are amazing. Get one of her eyes, okay? He's gonna go on Instagram and a whole bunch of people are gonna see these, okay? And he's kind of famous, so we gotta get the right pictures of her. She's so high energy and she's kind of all over the place. It's hard because she doesn't really sit still. Definitely not as easy as it looks to get these kind of pictures. And you can take hundreds of pictures before we get just that one shot that we were looking for. That is perfect. Toy. See that one? Like, I look at blue. Look at how pretty her eyes look there. All right, we're gonna look at these pictures. Come on, you sit here. Jordan, don't step in that. There you go. All right, let's see what we got. That's a good There's one. There's a good one of her eyes. I liked the one when I was lying down. Yeah, I think that's the one. This is the winning shot here. Yeah, I mean, that's just, this is a pretty good photo for a seven-year-old. I mean, that's pretty good. You got that heterochromia just like. Right now, Nicki Minaj is our only dog named after a rapper, but we're gonna be getting Cardi B soon. I figured I'd bring rap beef into the dog game. I got Sosa, I got Kong, I got Kobe, Hercules, Dynasty, Netflix, Zion, Nicki. Oh, uh, that's what's been hard lately. I've nailed so many names. You really gotta think about it now to like really get the good ones. Come on, babies. Come on. These two don't have names. This is Kano. It's Kong's son. So we got another smiler on our hands right here. Now, you already have a name, buddy. You know, this dog is actually a part of a giveaway that I'm doing, and the fans actually wanted me to name the dog. So, um, you know, I'm gonna give her a name. Really don't know what that's gonna be just yet. I mean, I got so many bangers that it's like, it's like hard now, and you really gotta think about it now to like really get the good ones, because it's gotta work. You, know, you gotta picture yourself screaming something out. So this is King Kong. There actually is significance to where I got the name Kong from. Not where I got the name, obviously you know where I got the name, but I was actually, I was watching that movie, Skull Island, and there was this line in the movie that I just really liked, and it was like, they call him Kong. He's king around here. And I just, ever since I heard that, Kong, get off of people, man. Go away. Kong, Kong. Most people, I guess, would like look at, at the dog and try to like get some type of name from that. I kind of give them their names first and I kind of live into that spirit almost. I, I had known that I wanted to name a dog Hulk. He lived into the spirit of that name. I named General long before he was really my general. I named him General. I was always thought that a name needed to have a good theme behind it. So I really got more into theme naming. Now, all right, Netflix, for example. That was a name that I just thought it was funny. I name a dog Netflix, and then I get a dog named Chill. And you breed Netflix and Chill, and you get your first Netflix and Chill babies. Like, you know, and right there, that's a story. Like, you smiling, right? It's like, that's what it will do to everybody. This is Sosa right here. Um, he got his name, Chief Keef Sosa. Everybody loves Sosa. Uh, this is Karma right here. I actually didn't name her, I think Lisa actually named her. Why doesn't Lisa name any of the dog? She's named one or two. Well, the truth is, yeah, you, your, your, your creativity in names is, you know, not the greatest. We have a duck. Her name is Duck Duck. I mean, we can't be having dogs named like Doggy Doggy or Quack Quack or something like it just doesn't work. We got a cat. I named him Marvel. That was actually really good. That's probably my best name. If I was in charge of the naming process, Hope might have ended up with something like 
Dog, dog. <laughs> Imagine, you know, he was called Rover. Imagine he was called Fred. Imagine he was called Teddy. He was named before he was even born. Where I knew I wanted a dog, you know, named after my favorite Marvel character, um, the Hulk. So I knew I was going to use that name long before he was even born. But when he was born, I knew that that was the litter that had the size and the significance, you know, to actually match the name properly. So that's how he got his name, the Hulk. And I mean, if he wasn't named the Hulk, I don't think any of this would have really went the same way that it's went. I don't think we'd be here today filming. I don't think he'd be famous. I don't think any of those things would have really happened in the same manner. The fart? Oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be rough. He's also very well known around here for how he decides to toot his rear end. He's like, what? I farted, so what? Yeah, it's nasty, bro. Dude, what do you think we should name this dog, man? What do you think we should name this puppy? Well, that's helpful. So the fans requested that I name the dog, so I figured I'd bring Jordan into the frame and and uh, use his brain because, I mean, that kid, he's, he's creative. You're a hero right now, girl. You need a name. I really don't know. A hero name. A hero name, what's a hero name? Like, I mean. Like what? Um, That's a girl. Rogue. 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 Storm. Storm. Yeah. Rogue. Yeah. Rogue, done. Meet Rogue. Names are powerful, man. Names are, that's your tag. You know what I mean, you gotta have a good tag in life. Yeah. I have a Hulk, I have a Kong, but I'm still on the lookout for, I'd say probably Thanos. <laughs> you know what I've really, really always wanted to name a dog? Fluffy. No, no. Negative. Training day. <laughs> the exercise is massively important for the dogs. Back off. Come here. The reality of these dogs is, you know, they were originally built for war. So when you have this many dogs together, I mean, it's it's like playing with fire, basically. So a lot of things can go wrong. I mean, they can go wrong quick. So I just got bit in the leg. I think I might be bleeding. Here at DDK, we breed big dogs, so keeping them in shape is pretty vital. Some of my dogs get a little bit thicker in the winter, so it's time to burn that off. Exercise helps my dogs stay sharp. It means they're ready to go at any time. Training day. Let's see how many dogs I can take out today. This isn't like taking your poodle for a walk in the Upper East Side. If I don't get the balance of the dogs right in this situation, things can get ugly. Kobe! Back off, come here. Nothing that I like better than just being with the dogs and up in the woods like that. I mean, for me, it's real important that the dogs, you know, stay in good shape. Important that they have, you know, good endurance and, you know, that they just get proper exercise every day. I mean, that's the key to owning dogs. Um, I've seen coyotes, mountain lions. You never know what you're gonna run into in the woods out there. There's moose out here, big moose, that are aggressive. Bears can be aggressive, but the bears, honestly, more or less, are. Not really what I worry about, it's more the moose. I've had a moose charge my car. So the moose will come after me. Now, why is he talking negatively about the moose? Uh, not a moose chased me in my car one time, it happened. So, that's why. Oh, there's some bear food. I ran into more people up there, you know, gunshots. I've been walking in the woods and literally heard bullets pass by me before. So then I've had to track down hunters and people illegally hunting on my property. So when you have this many dogs together, I mean, it's, it's like playing with fire, basically. So a lot of things can go wrong. I mean, they can go wrong quick. When you're dealing with multiple dogs, I mean, the first most important thing is that you're matching their energies, you know, that you have the right combination of dogs together. I have some dogs that just don't particularly like certain dogs. I don't like everybody either. So it's bonding, you know, really. So I would move just camaraderie. That's pretty much what we do. You know, if you try to do that in, inside of a room or something, I mean, it could be very explosive. Netflix, leave him alone. Yo. Kobe. They're all bad kids at one point or another. So you gotta just kind of watch them all. Kobe. No. 
Yeah, they're gonna be a bit, they're gonna be a bit uh, excited. They're like, what are we doing? Are we going to exercise? What are we doing? So this is Hercules. All right, that's good. He's Hulk's son. He's from the infamous $500,000 litter video, this guy here. Hercules has got his winter weight on him right now. He, he's a bit thick, he's a bit thick. I, a, bit, a bit of pudge on him right now. So we're gonna work that off. Hercules! We like to take the quads out, let them run, you know, let them get that kind of high octane experience in their life. You know, it's really good for the cardio. Come on, bro. He's peeing. He's peeing. When you gotta go, you gotta go. I mean, so he had to go. Oh man, we might have technical difficulties right now. We got the four wheel at fire, look at the dog, ready to just take off. I got the camera crew in front of me. I got the freaking drone flying around in the sky and everybody is primed and freaking ready. And what happens? It's not going down. <laughs> that thing. You know, dog's out here, he's looking at me like, you know, what the, so you know. I'm gonna take him for a run instead. All right, come on, let's go. It went from high octane to like medium <laughs> octane. You're psyched because you can keep up. <laughs> and here comes a psycho. So this is Dynasty. He is one of the main dogs that was on Hulk's head in some of those initial pictures. And he, you know, he's a bit of a troublemaker, this guy. Dynasty, you're a douche. So these are weighted harnesses that we use for the dogs. That's it, he is psyched, so let's get him going here before he bursts out of his saddle here. Oh, he's a love bug, I mean, he's a sweet dog. He just, like, his energy is just through the roof. But that's why a dog like this, you take out, you make sure he's exercising all the time, and you burn off all that energy, that's the key. I mean, these dogs physically are just leaps and bounds in front of most other breeds of dogs. You know? Much more sturdy, much more strong. I mean, the, this, the reality of these dogs is, you know, they were originally built for war. That's where the history starts. That's what they were kind of in, created for. Each dog was created for an, a use. Unfortunately, they were created for a disgusting use, you know, and, and so to me, they're very physical, uh, you know, so that's why it always was fitting for me for the dogs to, you know, do the protection work, to do the kind of rough work, you know, because they're very gruff, physically strong dogs. You know, the problem why people really didn't use them a lot in protection was because, you know, a lot of the time they're not always that stable. But I mean, I have, I have changed that without a shadow of a doubt. You know, my dog shows stability beyond. But he's got a poop, so that's what he's saying. He's about to take a dump. High five to the toilet life. So this is, this is Kobe. There's two sides to exercising dogs. You gotta exercise them physically and you gotta exercise them mentally. So I'm gonna exercise his brain more than exercise. We're gonna exercise his body too, but we're gonna exercise his, his mind. We're gonna exercise his brain. We're gonna exercise patience. That's what we're gonna do. So right now what I want him to do is be looking in my eyes. So you see the focus stays on me, not on the toy. Clearly you could tell, he, nothing he wants more than to bite this. But with great power, if you never learn to harness it, it's useless. But you can see he's really focused, he's very patient. Negative. See that? Here. No. 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 Now I'm gonna really make you wait. Well, since he was, he, he made a couple mistakes now, now I'm just gonna push his mind a little bit. I'm gonna make him work a little extra. So I'm making sure that he's keeping his focus on me and he's not getting carried away with this thing here, which he's doing good. So I'm gonna let him have it in a second. Fuck. <coughs> <coughs> Woo -hoo -hoo. 
Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, that, that's called frustration. That's called being frustrated. But I'm gonna show you the key point in this at routine right here is when I let go of this thing, watch. If I walk, wherever I go, he's gonna follow me and try to get me to play to push the tug with him. Wherever I go, he's gonna follow me around like, yo, dad, yo, dad, don't forget, we playing. Like, yo, yo, come on. Because it's no fun unless I'm touching it. You want you to be what the dog wants. And as you, ah, just got bit. Just got bit right there, that was live. But I just got bit in the leg, I think I might be bleeding a little bit. When you work with the dogs, um, you can expect to get nipped once in a while, it happens. I think he was a little distracted in that moment, and that's why he, he didn't notice how close the dog was. I'm thankful that the dog didn't bite my nuts. He nipped me in my leg. He, even a small little nick can actually break your skin. You know? That's what we've learned today in Bike Club. I got scars all up and down my arms, on my legs, and been on both feet, both hands. I have been bit in the nuts as well before. Welcome to dogs. Yeah, so I mean, even a situation like that, just a little, just, just playing around. You know, there's always an element of, you know, potential injury when you're dealing with these dogs. Me, I trust all my dogs and I don't need all my fingers. So these dogs are, you know, I mean, they're my love, they're my life, they're my legacy. I mean, they're everything. Ready for this one? Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna head up to Miami. I'm gonna hope meet up with some of the fans, hit the beach, get the fandom going. Is that the Hulk? As soon as people know the Hulk is around, it gets crazy. <laughs> I'll pay anybody to shake that out of his mouth. That's real. So right now we're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We headed over to one of my clients' house at Marquise Pouncey, pro bowler. We'll drop off on the hoax puppies. We're gonna meet up with them, make sure they're happy. And then we'll jet off to Miami and, because it'll probably be a bit wild. Yeah, the puppy is off of uh, Hulk and Porsche. He was super excited, you know, from the beginning, like about Hulk getting a dog from Hulk. Adamant about it being a dog from Hulk. Um, generally, you know, people are pretty excited about getting a dog from Hulk. He's a bit famous. Generally, I myself do not deliver dogs like this, but in celebrity clientele, I try to, you know, show my face and deliver the dogs myself. Let's do it. Let's get this puppy dropped off. Let's go see some smiling, happy faces. What's up, man? Good to meet you, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, Absolutely. All right, all right. She's a pretty little thing, this yeah, one, man. Yeah. She's wild, man. She's wild. She got all kinds of energy. Fortunately, we was a, we was a touch late, so. Uh, neither of the clients were actually here, but uh, one of his people was here, a great guy, was, was happy to meet him. Did they have a name for her? Oh, no, man, either Khaleesi, man. Uh, no, that's, that's a good one. Huh? That's a pretty name. That's a pretty name, man. Marquis gonna love this one. Gonna be a tall dog right here. <laughs> Look anything like this, we got, we got it made. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait till you see how she grows, man. She's she she gonna grow crazy, man. Oh, man. Overall, it was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy with it, you know what I mean? I'll probably come back when they're here and, and you know, just make sure they're happy with the dog and everything like that. And, uh, you know, that's it. Now we're gonna take off out of here. We're gonna hit Miami and hit the beach. I got my smile, I got my peoples, I got my dog. We're ready to go. I mean, people, people's reaction to the Hulk is, is, uh, is always incredible, you know. To see the smiles that he can put on people's faces. I appreciate all the fans and, and I love all the fans, but I mean, sometimes it, it can be a bit overwhelming. Hey, the Hulk? Yeah, man. I've had people come, up, come to my house. I've had people outside taking pictures of me in my yards, people like stalking me. You never know. That's the crazy part about fame in general. Is that the Hulk? We love the fans, but it's really important that we have somebody with us that's watching our backsides. Excuse me, brother. Well, with Marlon and uh, Hulk, there's uh, many tactical considerations when we're moving about. Simple things such as making sure people don't walk up and uh, feed him, because we have no idea what those potential snacks could be. Could be hazardous, could be fatal. This is Miami Beach, so we deal with a lot of, you know, unfortunate, intoxicated individuals. So my job is to basically protect Hulk as he's walking about, doing what he does best. As soon as people know the Hulk is around, it gets crazy. I feel like I owe it to the fans, you know, to bring him out to the public and to really get people up close and personal with him. Once they get their photographs, touch him, you know, and see that he's real.
Last two, last two, last two. Right. All right, guys, we gotta get going. We keep it moving and just keep moving because people just congregate and build. That's what happens. It's, it's, that's just love. That's the real hope. That's the real hope. That's, that's it. Blessing to me. Yeah, love, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. How many, how many dogs you got? I got two, I got a pit bull and I got a little uh, mini, mini French bulldog. Yeah? You can't get with it. You can't get with it. You, you, you want to tug with him? Like if we say one command. Oh, you I ain't never know what's going to happen when you hang out with me. Smash, Hulk. Oh, shit. Smash. Damn. Oh, good oh, boy. Good boy. Oh, I hate that to be on my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for real, I'll pay anybody to shake that out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs>
I built an entire empire with this dog right here. He's also the Hulk's grandfather. And he, actually, actually, he is right here. So that right there is the king, king on his bed. We bred Mia to General, and they created Gianna. Mia, Mia, chill, come on, come on. These two dogs produced Gianna, who is Hulk's mother. So these are Hulk's grandparents right here that you're looking at, okay? So that's actually where Ghostface comes into play. Ghostface I bought from a different kennel just to bring length in. I knew that I put enough girth in Gianna to where, you know, she is wide like a truck. So any dog that I bred to her that was tall, they were gonna meet somewhere in the middle, you know? So that's where Ghostface came into play and essentially that's where Hulk came from. You take these two dogs, you put them together, Ghostface and Gianna, and you get Hulk. We know this guy. This is Hulk when he was first born. Gianna looking in the background like, what you doing with my baby? You see me with no mustache, little young looking fella. They all have, you know, relation then. So if you go back to it, because so if, if General is Hulk's grandfather, Zion is a son of General. We got Blade right here. Blade is the son of Zion, so there's relation there. Salsa comes from kind of a special situation. Like his, his father, Blade, was shot somewhere off my property and Blade bred to his mom the day, like the day before he got shot. I just got, I got really lucky this time. You know, obviously you can see that there's one key dog that is not up here. He was here before in the middle of the hallway, but he's not there anymore. The day before he passed away, his his, his painting fell on my stairs. That's a true story. Ace was absolutely the most amazing trained dog that I'd ever seen in my life. It's the same lines as Hulk. They're, they're cousins or they have the same grandfather. That's, that's, that is one in a million. So now we're at Roxy. I brought Roxy in and when we brought Roxy to Hulk, we came up with Dynasty and Hercules. So that's where they came from. I then bred Roxy and Hulk a second time, and I sold a dog, dog named Magneto. And what happened was I ended up getting Minaj from them because she is actually in the pedigree. So she literally is related to like everybody on here, Roxy included. Uh, I did a breeding with Hulk to a dog named Cleopatra, and that's where Kobe came from. Basically, the females just don't get the credit they deserve. They just don't. I've had Stella since she was eight weeks old. She does this funny thing where she smiles at you. It scares some people, but um, it's, it's adorable. So one of Kong's great features is he's like his mom, Stella. He, he just has this amazing cheese grin. He, he smiles. If I had teeth like that, I'd smile like that too. Kong is Hulk's son. They have kind of a special relationship. They really like to roll around and you know, just be kind of big guys together. You know, I've lived with these dogs for 15, 16 years, and it just was a meticulous project, you know, to get to, to where we are, you know, a legacy that will live forever. Legacy is massive, you know, that's what you leave when, when you're gone, you know. You know, we, we've, we've built a fine legacy so far. I think the dogs speak for themselves.